this is a cricket. And like all insects, its body temperature is closely linked to the temperature of its surroundings. So the hotter it gets, the more active they become. Now this is an excellent place to investigate electricity. Just look! It's everywhere! But what about magnetism? I can't see any of that around. I'm going to need help. They've got a reputation as the fiercest fish in the whole world. So, what sort of lunatic would get into a tank full of red-bellied piranhas? Yep, you guessed it. But actually, this isn't as crazy as it looks. You see, under most circumstances, piranhas are about as aggressive as your average goldfish. Unless they smell blood in the water, or they're very, very hungry, there's no way they'll tackle an animal as big as me whilst I'm still breathing. Still, I'm rather glad they were fed this morning. How they have been fed for days? Hmm, my cue to exit, I think. Science is sometimes slimy, often gooey, and occasionally terrifying. Thank goodness today's investigation is about magnets, because without them, I'd be in serious trouble. Here's a riddle for you. When is a giraffe not a giraffe? Don't know. When it's an acarpi. What's an acarpi? This is. They're black, white and brown all over. So what is the answer to the riddle of the acarpi? Little acarpi, big acarpi, little acarpi, big acarpi, little acarpi. Not much of a tongue twister, but this is. Size for size, the acarpi has the longest tongue of any mammal, 50 centimetres. Good evening and welcome to another episode of Changing Fields. This week we're going to show you how you can turn a perfectly ordinary field in Swansea into a fantastic animal hospital. How are you behave? This week's Crazy Creatures comes from the RSPCA shelter in Swansea. As you can see, there is a lot of building work going on here. So what exactly are their plans for the future and how are they helping out animals in Wales today? There'll also be a lot more. How he meets some barn owls and there's another chance to go inside the Crazy Creatures office. Oh no, it's a scary place. You don't want to go there. But first, I'm off on patrol. Well, I've learned the theory, and I've seen them flying. I was going to leave it at that. But Judy won't let me go until I've tried it for myself. Smile. Smile. Have a glove. It was an exhilarating feeling just stepping into the air. At the moment we're using the dynamic lift off this hill. We're searching for some thermals now. Absolutely incredible. Are we fish? We're in the thermal now. <laughs> It was quite bumpy going into the thermal, but once inside I felt a powerful uplift, and we were quite a heavy load. On landing, I was as dignified and cool as ever. <laughs> <laughs> that was absolutely brilliant! <laughs> Alright, let's sort this out. Genes are in every cell of every living thing. They're what carry the information that makes that thing the way it is. So, the genes of a hydra will control how successful it is in its surroundings. Well, actually, snakes' mouths aren't that small. They're just different to us. Um, I've got a snake here somewhere. Uh, uh -huh. Now, if you look at this snake, you can see that his mouth it goes right back to there. And that gives him a terrifically wide gape. And something else, if you look at the underside, and can you see that line running right down the middle there? This bottom jaw is made of two separate bones, not one like ours. And it's not firmly fixed like ours. If he really opens his mouth, those can come apart, stretching. It looks as if he's dislocated his jaw, and he can swallow a whole mouse, quite a large one. When he eats a mouse, you can actually see him walking his teeth over it. And once he's finished, he'll swallow it. And just click his jaw back into shape. 